Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so because that's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the Oculus Quest development videos. I'm going to be basically adding a character controller for the Oculus Quest. We're also going to be using Pro Builder to move around the area and basically show you how we can also rotate our bodies, look around, and then look at some of the obstacles that I'm going to be creating with Pro Builder. So let's jump into Unity and let's start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in Unity, which is to create a new scene and also add a character controller. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and basically go into our sample scene and I'm going to rename it to be VR Movement. This is going to be the first one of many tutorials that I'm going to be giving about Oculus Quest. Okay, so now that we have this created, I'm going to get rid of my main camera. And then I'm going to go into our Oculus integration. And then we can go into VR, go into prefabs. And they already have uh, basically a variety of different prefabs that we can use. The one that I'm going to be using in this, in this example is going to be the OVR player controller, which is basically inheriting from the character controller. So it's going to drag it and drop it. And I'm also going to create a couple of components just to basically organize our scene. This one is going to be, I'm just going to call this one controllers. Let me make sure that I have capital letters there. And then I'm going to put basically the, the player controller in there. I'm also going to create one for the lights. And right now I may have one light only, but I might have more lights in the other scenes. So we just move it down. And then lastly, we're going to create one for content. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I got this structure from doing Magic Leap videos. I know that they keep the structure that way. So I'm just going to start doing it that way because I really, I really enjoy that structure. All right. So now that we have the controller, we have the lights. Let's look at the basically the player controller. So if you look at the player controller, you're going to notice that you have, of course, we have a character controller assigned. We have different settings that are already pretty fine for us. We also have an OVR player controller. This is going to be the controller that we're going to be using in basically in virtual reality. There's a lot of different settings in here that I might not cover. I will cover the snap rotation. We're going to basically look at turning it off and also how it reacts when you have it on. And then it also comes with an OVR scene sample controller and also the OVR debug info. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and, and make some changes on the position. I'm just going to set it to 000. And then I'm OK with the rotation of 000 and a scale uh, 111. That's completely fine. So now that we have that, I want to add some other, basically some obstacles. I also want to add an environment. And I didn't really want to spend a lot of time using a program like Maya or Blender to bring things in. It says, instead, I'm going to use ProBuilder. So let's go ahead and go into our package manager. And I'm going to look for ProBuilder in the packages. So let's just wait until it loads and we can basically download the latest version. So I'm going to go ahead and download for that 1.0. Let's just go ahead and hit install. And ProBuilder is great for prototyping, which is what we're going to be doing in most of these videos. Then I think what I'm going to do is after we're done with prototyping, we know the basic movement, jumping, running, and, and ping, picking items. Then what I'm going to do is we can work on, you know, making more complex scenes and then playing, playing in those scenes. So for now, we can just keep it very simple. All right, so it looks like we got it loaded. Now what I'm going to do is we can go into Tools, Pro Builder. I'm going to click on the Pro Builder window to bring it down. And then I'm just going to snap it. And this is going to be basically our, our playground. All right, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this plus symbol to bring in uh, sh the shape tool. And I'm basically going to snap this as well here. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just resize this. You can notice that I have the, the player controller is beneath it. And I know that because of the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this just you know a little bit large so that we have enough place to, to walk around. I can do something like that and maybe make it a little bit thinner. I think that that works. And there we go. I'm just going to click on my my controller just to make sure that everything looks good. All right, so we're going to we're gonna clean it up in a bit. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material. 
because that's really hard to see. So before we do that, let's click on build so that we build our cube. All right, and then the next thing that I'll do is I'll start working on adding a material. So it's gonna create a folder, and then we'll just say this is gonna be materials. And then we're just gonna go create and create a new material. This one is gonna be for the floor. We can call it floor, we can call it ground. I think floor works. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is just ba basically make it a little darker so that we can see it right now. It's just way too wide, it's just really hard to see. And then I'm just gonna click on the albedo and then just search, search for grid. And I really like this grid underscore zero one dark. And we're just gonna use that one. And then just drag and drop it into the floor. And we can see now it's, now I like it better because we can see where things are and we can now see also the gizmo that is associated with the player controller. I'm gonna move this down a little bit and maybe move it down a tiny bit more. We can probably just go here and do something like that. Let me also snap it, let's see. So it looks like the center happens to be the edge and I think that's fine. I don't, I'm not very picky about that. And then what I'll do, let's go ahead and back to pivot and then I'm just gonna resize it. What I'm gonna do is I wanna resize it evenly. Let's do 35 there and then right about 35 on Z and then maybe on Y. I don't like all the decimal points, so we can just do 0.23. I think that, that works. And we have a, mix, a, a mesh collider associated with this component. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that and we're just gonna use a bo box collider. There we go, I think that's cleaner. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder called prefabs. And then we can just double click on that folder. And this one is gonna be our floor. So I'm just gonna call it floor and then drag it and drop it into prefabs. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know that we're gonna do, we're gonna be using this a lot. So let's just go ahead and create prefabs right now. All right, so we have our floor there. Now what I wanna do is I want to create a couple of obstacles so that we can basically reach them. We can see the scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on plus on the new shape as well. And, oh, and the reason why I don't see it is because it's beneath it. So let me go ahead and, there we go. Let's go ahead and click on the new shape. Oh, there we go. And it doesn't matter really, you know, how big, how small we wanna make him. But I'm gonna try, let's go ahead and use the pivot or maybe the center. Yeah, I'm gonna do, do the center so that we can resize it. There we go. So I'm just gonna put it right about, right, right about there. I think that's that's fine and then I'll just I'll just move it so what I'm gonna do with this one too is I'm going to I'm going to remove the mesh collider because that is gonna be very intensive on performance so I want to use a bo box collider instead and then I'm also gonna add a rigid body because I know that at some point we're gonna be moving those so rigid body the box collider and then I think that that's good and then we we'll just call it obstacle and the same thing that I did with the floor, we're gonna drag it and drop it into prefabs. And looks like I don't have, let's see what this is doing. And this is complaining about, let's go ahead and remove it. It's complaining about something here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. Let me just recreate it pretty quick. Hit build and there we go. Let's go ahead and give it a material. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go into materials, I'm gonna duplicate the floor. This one is gonna be obstacle. We can call it box obstacle, because I know that we may have different things. And let's just use singular. There we go, and then we can just change the color. I want it to be, I want it to be much lighter. And then I still wanna use, let's see how that looks. I wanted to use a lighter color, so let's see if we have a grid that is lighter. We can do, I think that great light works. And let me see if I change the smoothness. I think I like, I think that works. All right, so we have our obstacle and the other thing that I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and associate it, which I did. And then let's just call this one box obstacle. And let me just clear the errors. Go back to the project, go into the prefabs. I'm gonna remove that prefab and drag and drop this prefab. There we go. Then I'm just gonna drag it and drop it into content. 
I still don't like the color that much. I want it to be, let me just select the emission and make it, yeah, I want it to be much lighter than that. And I think, okay, I'm happy with that. Then on this material, I want it, I don't want it to be as, there's like too much smoothness. There we go. I think if we do 0.1, it's fine. Okay, so, and then the next thing that I'll do is I'll just go ahead and set it. Maybe right about there. All right, so our character controller is going to be right here. And then we're gonna have a box right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize the box. Let's do something like 2.5 all the way across. Okay, that's gonna be our first obstacle. And then we'll add another one, maybe right here. Another one maybe right there. And I'll just, I'll just duplicate it. Let me just resize this one. Make this one much bigger. Let's maybe add a wall somewhere here and I think that I think we can just make it a little skinnier and maybe just put a wall right there I'll just snap it right to the edge there we go so we have a little wall there we have a couple of cubes let me just make this one a little bigger maybe I'll make this one a little smaller and we should be able to walk around okay so I'm happy with that so I'm just gonna rename all of these ones to be Bo box obstacle there we go and all right i like to have things organized because i i'm going to be basically putting this code in in github so i want you to download it and see everything you know very well organized all right so i think i'm i think i'm happy with what we have we have a pretty good you know indicator so i'm going to do two different tests on the first test we're going to have the a snap rotation basically check and then on the next test I'm gonna run a new build and we're gonna have it turn off so I want to show you the difference between between those two I'm gonna tell you right now that one will make you really dizzy and the other one won't and you will notice which one it is as soon as you're seeing the experience so let me go ahead and get this build so I'm gonna go into build settings and I already have my oculus quest connected I show you in the previous video how to do that so make sure that you go through that video so that it shows you all the steps to get it basically to get a deployment going into your device okay so now that we have everything set what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on build and run and then this one is going to be the movement demo i think that name basically suits this pretty well before i do that we need to do one thing so let me hit cancel we need to remove the previous scene that we built and add, add this scene so this one is going to be the vr movement okay now we can go back into build and this one can be we can probably just match the name so that we are consistent so we can just call it vr movement and then i'm going to hit save and then this is basically going to run and deploy to my device so i'll show you here in a few seconds how it looks on the device all right guys so this is now launching let's look and see how our scenes looks like so I can see the walls that we added. We can also see the cubes. It has the high emission. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm basically rotating, moving the joystick on my right controller. So you can see that it's doing a snap, what they call a snap rotation. It's not a smooth rotation when it's turned on, but when you turn it off, it basically will be smooth. This one doesn't make me as DC, so I kind of like this one, even though it's not as realistic as the other one. So, but you'll be, you know, like I said, you'll be the one to decide which one works better for your game. So, I'm basically looking around and this is really cool. Like, I can see the sun. You can see the sun. I can look around. I also have the grid in front of me. So, you can see that I that still works and it's part of the built-in core fun functionality. I can now get closer because I have a rigid body and also collisions. This is now allowing me to go through. And you can also see that we have shadows going on. I can move around. So it's really crazy that you can get so much done with, you know, so in so little time. So that's honestly what I wanted to show you. And I'll show you on the next demo. What I'm gonna show you is how we can do the, basically the rotation without snapping. So let me get that bill and show you that in a few seconds. All right, guys, so let me show you the one with the basically the smooth rotation. So I'm going to go into my library. 
I'm gonna go into unknown sources and then we can open up the one that I just built. You should see the Unity logo here in just a second. And if I walk around, you can see that we have the walls. And But if I move and do a rotation, you can see that it's now smooth. It's not snapping. It does make me a little bit dizzy when I'm doing it, but I think it, I think it performs. It feels more realistic than doing a snap, but you know, you, you'll be the judge whenever you're, you're creating your game to see which one is better for your player. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video about Oculus Quest development. If you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.